Hi, this is Brian Forster, and this is the last part of a nine-part series about our explorations of ancient sites in Mexico in February of 2019. Today we are at uh, Chichen Itza, and we're going to see the ancient site if we can get through all of these vendors. There are hundreds of them, if not thousands, selling actually quite fascinating things. Now here you see the classic building called the Castillo, or El Castillo, which is a pyramidal structure located at Chichen Itza. But uh, the site is actually very vast, and a high percentage has still not been excavated. So the Mayan name Chichen Itza means at the mouth of the well of the Itza. This derives from Chi, meaning mouth or edge, and Chen, or Chen, meaning well. Itza is the name of an ethnic lineage group that gained political and economic dominance of the northern peninsula. One possible translation for Itza is enchanter or enchantment of the water from its sorcerer and ha for water. So where we're going now is actually towards the ball court. And this, as far as I know, is the largest ball court in all of Mesoamerica. Now the ball court or the ball game was a sport used by the Maya and also the Olmec and possibly as well other cultures. The ball was made of natural rubber and supposedly you were not allowed to use I think your head, your hands or your feet in order to strike the ball. Now you see that every stone here is of a different shape and size. It is all limestone, but it's not a soft type of limestone, it's a metamorphose type. So the intriguing thing is that the Mayan people did not have metal tools of any kind, so how were they able to cut and shape these blocks? The material is local, but it is reported to be somewhere in the region, or its formation was something like 50 million plus years ago. Now you see some gaps in certain parts of the wall, so it is possible that this was reconstructed not only in modern times, but also in Mayan times. You can see the repair work clearly that's been done. And now we're walking towards a small temple building. What's kind of interesting about this is that the staircase is composed of very tight fitting solid blocks of limestone, which we also saw at Teotihuacan and other sites in Mexico, suggesting that these locations could very well be older than what standard scholarship suggests, that the Mayan people might have found an ancient series of structures and rebuilt them. Other possible evidence of this is the staircase you're going to see. It's been repaired, but each one of these is a very massive, solid block of metamorphosed limestone. Then we have these serpent heads um, of the figure of Kukul Khan, who was the feathered serpent deity, and then this chakmul, which was used for sacri sacrifice, quite possibly not human sacrifice, more likely fruit and other things were given to the gods rather than this over play done about human sacrifice being done all the time by the Maya. So now we're walking back towards El Castillo and you can see intriguingly that there's a door which is blocked off. Now a couple of decades ago I was allowed to go inside of this but now it's locked and no entrance is allowed but it shows that the El Castillo pyramid is to some degree hollow and there's a smaller pyramid inside of it. Once again we're looking at another staircase of large solid blocks and also the orientation of that little building is about 23 degrees off of north, south, east and west whereas most of the other structures are perfectly aligned or almost perfectly aligned north, south, east, and west. 
And now as we walk past our guide, Sergio, on the left with the, the pink shirt, we're going to see one of the cenotes, which were sacrificial pools. It's also where the bulk of the water of this area comes from. The water percolates through the limestone and then collects in these rather large pools. This one was excavated early in the 20th century and many gold and jade objects were found as well, of course, as the bones of the sacrificial victims. And finally, if you walk far enough, you're able to see this rather unique building, which was an astronomical observatory. The Maya were almost fanatical about um, the stars and also the concept of recording time. And their calendar was incredibly accurate, especially due to the fact that they existed or their prominence was more than a thousand years ago. So, a relatively short video about Chichen Itza. Again, it's part of a nine-part series.